The saddest aspect of life right now is that science gathers knowledge faster than society gathers wisdom. Never let your sense of morals prevent you from doing what is right. In life, unlike chess, the game continues after checkmate. Anti-intellectualism has been a constant thread winding its way through our political and cultural life, nurtured by the false notion that democracy means that my ignorance is just as good as your knowledge. Your assumptions are your windows on the world. Scrub them off every once in a while, or the light won't come in. If my doctor told me I had only six minutes to live, I wouldn't brood. I'd type a little faster. There is a cult of ignorance in the United States, and there has always been. The strain of anti-intellectualism has been a constant thread winding its way through our political and cultural life, nurtured by the false notion that democracy means that my ignorance is just as good as your knowledge. Life is pleasant. Death is peaceful. It's the transition that's troublesome. Any planet is Earth to those that live on it. The most exciting phrase to hear in science, the one that heralds the most discoveries, is not Eureka. I found it, but that's funny. Violence is the last refuge of the incompetent. Properly read, the Bible is the most potent force for atheism ever conceived. Self-education is, I firmly believe, the only kind of education there is. I write for the same reason I breathe, because if I didn't, I would die. Those people who think they know everything are a great annoyance to those of us who do. I am an atheist, out and out. It took me a long time to say it. I've been an atheist for years and years, but somehow I felt it was intellectually unrespectable to say one was an atheist, because it assumed knowledge that one didn't have. Somehow, it was better to say one was a humanist or an agnostic. I finally decided that I'm a creature of emotion as well as of reason. Emotionally, I am an atheist. I don't have the evidence to prove that God doesn't exist, but I so strongly suspect he doesn't that I don't want to waste my time. If knowledge can create problems, it is not through ignorance that we can solve them. It is the obvious which is so difficult to see most of the time. People say, it's as plain as the nose on your face. But how much of the nose on your face can you see, unless someone holds a mirror up to you? Imagine the people who believe such things and who are not ashamed to ignore, totally, all the patient findings of thinking minds through all the centuries since the Bible was written. And it is these ignorant people, the most uneducated, the most unimaginative, the most unthinking among us, who would make themselves the guides and leaders of us all, who would force their feeble and childish beliefs on us, who would invade our schools and libraries and homes. I personally resent it bitterly. Creationists make it sound as though a theory is something you dreamt up after being drunk all night. Intelligence is an accident of evolution, and not necessarily an advantage. To surrender to ignorance and call it God has always been premature, 
and it remains premature today. You must keep sending work out. You must never let a manuscript do nothing but eat its head off in a drawer. You send that work out again and again, while you're working on another one. If you have talent, you will receive some measure of success, but only if you persist. They won't listen. Do you know why? Because they have certain fixed notions about the past. Any change would be blasphemy in their eyes, even if it were the truth. They don't want the truth, they want their traditions. I prefer rationalism to atheism. The question of God and other objects of faith are outside reason and play no part in rationalism, thus you don't have to waste your time in either attacking or defending. I am not a speed reader. I am a speed understander. People think of education as something they can finish. Jokes of the proper kind, properly told, can do more to enlighten questions of politics, philosophy, and literature than any number of dull arguments. Once, when a religionist denounced me in unmeasured terms, I sent him a card saying, I am sure you believe that I will go to hell when I die, and that once there I will suffer all the pains and tortures the sadistic ingenuity of your deity can devise and that this torture will continue forever. Isn't that enough for you? Do you have to call me bad names in addition? It pays to be obvious, especially if you have a reputation for subtlety. The easiest way to solve a problem is to deny it exists. Part of the inhumanity of the computer is that, once it is competently programmed and working smoothly, it is completely honest. There never can be a man so lost as one who is lost in the vast and intricate corridors of his own lonely mind, where none may reach and none may save. You can prove anything you want by coldly logical reason, if you pick the proper postulates. To succeed, planning alone is insufficient. One must improvise as well. It has been my philosophy of life that difficulties vanish when faced boldly. The most hopelessly stupid man is he who is not aware he is wise.